Okay. It is 11 o'clock. And, <coughs> and that means uh, stream time. Yay! Okay, so hello and welcome to everyone who's joining me now or later. Um, you might hear some noises in the background. Uh, that's because the leaf blowers are at it again. Um, but hopefully the AI audio filtering system is doing its uh, job and filtering out most of it. Um, it may also be filtering out a fan that I have going right now because, you know, it's starting to get warm. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, I can't filter out my burping. At least not this AI. I bet you there is a way to train an audio filtering AI to remove burps. Um, so there is that. Okay. So today, um, I'm going to be working on the model again. Um, I can't remember what I actually had planned. Um, and I didn't bother to go back and rewatch the end of the last video where I mentioned what I was thinking of doing. Um, I did, after the stream ended, uh, go in and play around with some lighting ideas that struck me so I would have the setups for later. So I am going to probably show that off a little bit. Um, but I think today I am going to be um, going around and looking at my references that I have. So I can see what I need to add or uh, tweak a little bit because I think it's interesting how I add stuff to this, but I am not seeing it in my list of textures that are built into it anymore. And I don't believe I have an I have um, removed textures that aren't referenced turned on. Um, so this is interesting. Okay, because I only have two images, but I know I opened up another one. So I'm going to open up another reference here. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Okay. Also remember to set my phone to do not disturb for the stream. Okay, so I'm going to see if I can't find some of the other references. Well, I may as well bring this one in since we're going to be doing the outside of the clubhouse at one point. So I need that image. Uh, so we're going to open up that and let's add another one that's a reference to the front that I keep adding to the um, file, but it seems to keep disappearing and I'm not quite sure why. So I'm going to add this one. Um, and there was another one I just saw, so I'm going to add that one too. And let's add one more. This is a side view. Okay, from Bab Seed, I believe that's what it was called. Okay, so there we have a bunch of references added to the um, file here, and hopefully they stick around this time because they keep disappearing. Because I had several other references in the file, and every time I've reopened the file, they've disappeared so that's interesting so i'm gonna go in i'm gonna check my preferences here and i i know i clicked on that there we are and see if there's like an option that automatically removes stuff from your uh, uh file as it's like saving it or something. Let's see, text files, tab and spaces, load UI, um, relative path, save preview image, save prompt, two versions, recent files, auto save every two minutes. Let's actually put that down to one. Um, 
say preferences here. D D D uh, interface, splash screen, user tooltips, Python tooltips, region overlay, corner splitting, navigation controls. Uh, I am not seeing anything. Uh, hmm. Lighting, editing, that might have something in it here. Ah, ice is on me, Jen. Okay, let's see. I'm, I'm currently looking for a setting. I'm currently looking to see if a setting's on that will re that removes unused textures from a file because like I put a bunch of references into this thing a lot and they keep disappearing. So I'm checking to see if there's an a um, option check that will remove unused textures from the file for some reason. So I want to make sure that's not currently going. Okay. Uh, da, 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 duplicate data. And which is just curve here, light surface. Nope, it's 3D cursor. Okay, I don't see anything there. Let's see. Nope, nothing miscellaneous. Animation, I'm not seeing anything there. Okay, add-ons. Wait for that to load a little bit here because there's a lot of add-ons in Blender. Okay, I do not see anything there. Um, uh, mouse drag thresholds. Emulate number pad, do not need that. Advanced numeric input. That's something to look into later. Um, do not need that. Those are okay. Uh, that's okay. Uh, let's actually increase. I undo's. I always like to have a high number of undo's. So I'm actually going to increase this to. Let's go with a hundred. Okay, save my preferences. Da, 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 da. Uh, let me finish. Add undo steps. Scroll back line texture. Time out. Texture time out. Hmm, interesting. I am not seeing anything. Um, I am not seeing anything for the um, thing I was looking for just in case it was on. So it may not be on, but I'm still wondering why certain things get, um, cause I've added a bunch of references images in here before and they somehow disappear and I'm not quite sure why. Okay. So that's all set up. Ah, and since you're here, Sasami Chan, um, I'm going to actually, this will probably be a good time to show off a little bit of some lighting I started to play around with. Um, in uh, Blender when I was um, trying out some stuff after the last stream um, I had some ideas on how to do some of the lighting I've been trying to do so I um, started playing around with it okay so I'm going to show that off now I just need to yep move this over a little bit. Mm, excuse me. Okay. View. That's what I wanted. And mm, excuse me. Okay. So I just need to attach this to here. Let that reload. Okay. I'm playing around with making more show accurate um, shading. So I'm actually going to turn all of that on. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, because I actually got the idea right after la um right after last stream. So I played around with it and got some stuff I'm pretty satisfied with that feels a lot like how the show looks. Okay, I should go here and do that. So yeah, that's what I have so far. And it's like, it's closer to what the show looks like. As you can see by the reference down here. They have these weird kind of shadows that I also came up with a way to um, emulate that. Uh, and I might actually try it during this stream, but I'm also gonna apply my um, new texture, new texture, new lighting to uh, some other surfaces I didn't do while I was um, you know, playing around with this idea because I wanted to show it off a little bit here. Okay. So now I'm going to put this down here, move this over here, move this over here. Just a little bit like that. And now we can stick that in here. Grab this, move it over here. Here and here. And then here. Now I'm going to zoom in because it does take some tweaking. Okay. And then I can just tab into this. Is it this way to make it darker? Yeah. I need to darken that just a little bit there. Okay, actually it needs to get a little bit more dark. Okay, that feels closer to the reference there. Okay, now that. I think that's actually about right right there. Okay. Yep. Yeah, it took me a little bit to figure out how to um get these thing get the um textures and everything to behave. Oops, and I forgot to do something, so I'm gonna actually undo some of my tweaking here because I forgot to limit it to one object. There we go, that should be. Yep, that's far enough back. So now I can just zoom in here a little bit, tap on that to limit it to one object and rename this to um, portrait, picture, uh, painting, words I can spell. Let's go with paint. There we go. Now I can zoom back out, grab this and put it into a better spot here. Input the correct parameters. Slide this over here. Zoom in again. Open up the settings for this. Adjust this back down to two. And put that at one. Just out of curiosity, that's 
There we go. That looks good. Yeah, that looks close to the shot there. Okay. Shun. Okay, let's see. I wonder. Da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah, that looks good. Hey. Copy this, and let's go to here. Move this over so we have a little bit of room. Zoom out, paste that in. Make it a single use, rename it, and call it window. And just a minute, so I'm going to add zero one to the end of it. Okay, dunk, dunk, and dink. Okay, open this back up, and I'm actually going to turn this down. So why don't we put this back down to two? Is usually a good thing. Yeah, there we go, three. And let's put this back to six is usually a good spot for that. Okay, let's zoom out and see what happens if I crank it up. Okay, so that's what's going on there. Okay. That's really nice. Let's put this back to two point six, and then just this. Yeah. Let's put that back to two point six. Okay. That looks good there. Let's actually move this shifter over so it's easier to see where everything's going. Okay, so we got the 50% diffused texture, which is just a gray sheet. And then we have a converter that converts the shader into a color. And I put that into this color ramp converter and set it to, so it's basically just black and white. So it's a binary in, and that creates um, a color output and I convert the color output into a value that I can use to um, basically create a real time mask that um, splits a darker version of the input texture um, and it, and the default light version of the input texture into a shader and that outputs the two together and makes it so you get these nice separations between the two and I can adjust the deepness of the color because it's a little bit unique per object. Um, so I can get nice lines and clear cut shadows on the objects. Make it feel more like the highlights from the show itself. Excuse me. And the nice thing is it's real time. So as I move lights around, it changes how the objects behave. And you can see how the light changes as I move the light around. So that makes things handy. Okay, let's click on this. Yeah, 
it definitely more matches the tomb-like shading of the show, and I have a lot of control over it. And I even have an idea on how to um, do certain things. Um, but I'm going to be playing around with that later. Okay, so let's look here. Oop. Okay, we got the material out. We got the shooter input. Go back to the rope. How does the rope actually look? Does it actually need that type of shader? Uh, it kind of does. Um, but not really. Hmm. Grab this light and check something out real quick here. Yeah, the bottom definitely lights up on this. <laughs> Let's see. I'm just debating on how to take care of the shader that's on this because there's multiple objects that are getting multiple shaders um, from this. So you got multiple colors going on here for each individual piece of this. See, we have one, two, three, four on this. So. Hmm. Wonder. I don't think I can do that, but I am going to play around with an idea that just popped into my head. I'll click on this, zoom out, zoom back in, copy that. Hmm. Interesting. Ah. So I'm going to click on that. Hit copy and I'm going to go over here to this. Find this. I'm going to paste that in. Grab this and put it right here. Let's see. Shader and color in. I think I have to, I can't just input the shader directly into color. Yeah, I can't. So I need a converter. So let's add converter. Um, looking for a shader to RJB. Okay, we'll put that to there. That to there. And then we can put that to there. Okay. But we have all these refactors and demeanors to dimmers to control light, we meter and angle, etc. but it's all over my head. I can see that. Uh, certain things kind of get over your head if you don't um, do a lot of practice and studying into it. Okay, got that. Okay, let's do this and get the view and align viewport to here. So I'll more easily move this around. Okay. Now, let's do that and call this the lamp. Blue, and I can just copy this. Ah, 
here. Move this over and paste in this. There. Move this back. And add the converter. Shader, shader. Ah, there we are. Put that right there. Connect and connect and then connect. Move this over here. Put that down there like that. And this one, I'm actually going to highlight both of these and hit copy. Here, move this back and paste that in there. Do this, do this, connect this to here and this to here. Okay, connect that to there. And click on this one. Move this over here, place this in place. Move this up here, move this up here. Connect and connect. And I think I got everything. I got everything, but I don't feel like I've gotten this color right here. Hmm. That there, that there. All right, get some vision to there. Let's go into this and let's see. I can't play around with the color a little bit here. Yeah, that, that affects those, but it's not affecting that color. Hmm, that's interesting. Okay. Let's put that in. Okay. Uh, let's go with select none. And what's really nice is I should be able to click on each one of these and then hit select. Okay, so that's the color. That's the material that's affecting here, up here, and here. Okay. And that one is hooked up to the shader. Interesting. But it doesn't seem to be being affected as much as the other materials. Hmm. Okay, popping back over to the chat room real quick. My eyes just don't see color change well. Like if you put a TV next to an HD TV and ask me what looks better, they look the same. Hmm. So you mean a CRT versus a um, HD TV? Um, because that's also a difference. Um, an LCD versus a CRT is a big difference um, because of the difference in technology. Like a um, CRT is a little bit more fuzzy, a little bit more what they would call analog, and an LCD is more digital. Like what you see is what you get. There's no interpretation in it. Like uh, not interpretation, like no fuzziness that's going on. Because CRTs have a natural kind of fuzz to them. They don't have a natural um, fixed resolution as opposed to LCDs, which have a fixed resolution. Um, 
so that's um interesting let's see here do, 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 do. that's not it. that's the what i want because i want to select none i don't know this so i now know that this is affecting that so that's interesting let's look into this again and i'll just slide this aha uh -huh, there we are because it's so the light's so close to that particular surface it, it, it's just so bright that it doesn't get affected and it comes out as a gradient instead of a solid color okay that's interesting i'm gonna have to play around with that D -d -d. I don't know why I'm hitting the undo button when I can just um, hit 0.6 here. Yeah, a lot of people actually have that. Um, that they can't see the di differences between DVD and Blu-ray. Um, especially since like most people's viewing distance from TVs um actually uh make it so it's hard to tell the difference between an hd signal and a good 480p signal which is technically a form of hd um but when you get into the technical specifications of um dvd hd standard when you start getting i should say getting to the technical specifications between standard definition high definition true high true high definition 4k actual 4k um then you start getting into the color spectrums rec something something i can't remember it's like some two digit number um it just starts getting into the weeds and you're like what what's what's up with you i mean really <laughs> um because like there is no real standards because um the problem with standards nowadays is everyone wants to be the standard because if you are the standard, then everyone has to pay you to be the standard. And oops. Um, so, uh, oh. so that's that thing. Um, let's see here. Uh, D -d -d. And like uh, 480p is technically a low-end, high-definition signal because it has more lines of revolution, resolution, more lines of resolution than a standard, um, standard definition, uh, which is kind of weird. It's like low definition is a better way to describe because there's no such thing as standard definition. Um, there's the there's 480i, which is what we watched for years. Um, most DVDs are 480i. Um, the I stands for a term, the I and the P stands for two terms. I stands for interlace, which means that the signal contains um, interlaced lines. Um, so in a 480i signal, you actually only have half the um, visual resolution, which you have a full temporal re resolution. Um, which is another weird, fun set of terms that you really only start getting into if you're actually having to encode into this stuff. In other words, creating a video file from something you're making. Um, like right now, I think I'm rendering this out at uh, 720p, I think. Um, let's see, where would I find that right now? Because I just need to look at what resolution I am spitting out. Uh, I think it's um, 720p. I can actually probably look at the stream statistics and... Okay. Uh, currently, it says I have a maximum streaming quality of 360p. Um... So that's interesting because I'm pretty sure I'm spitting out a higher resolution than that. Uh, so that's actually very common, getting back to what you were saying, Sasami Chan, that a lot, not a lot of people can see the difference between DVD and Blu ray because there's actually a big difference between VHS and DVD. When you're going from VHS to DVD, you're going from 
like uh it can be 480i but it's actually slightly lower than that i can't remember the exact resolution it's like it's not even like truly 640 by 480 it it's something like 360 something um and that's interlace which means that it's actually throwing up the odd lines and then the inter and then the even lines every other frame so each frame is a different set of lines of the same image um and it's projecting that so quickly that your brain blends the two sets of lines together and um crts could easily handle that because crts are also naturally interlaced with the way they display information so um when a CRT tosses up images, it's actually drawing every other line. So first it draws the even lines, then it draws the odd lines. But when you play back a DVD um, on an LCD, and if the DVD is encoded in 480p, you're getting the whole image in one shot. So it's drawing all the lines at a time. Um, instead of just odd, then even. And I'm throwing out a lot of like technical terms, and I'm sorry. Uh, the wiki for all this stuff is very informative if you want to read through it, but basically it's very common for people not to be able to see the difference between eight DVDs and Blu-rays because they're sitting at the wrong distance for the eyes to even pick up on the resolution differences. But what's really interesting is not image resolution, how many dots are being thrown up on screen, it's how many frames per second that's being displayed that a lot of people can see the differences in. Um, and that's usually only between 30 and 60 as well. But if you go between 60 and 120, it gets a little harder for most people to see the difference between those two. So 60 is a good number to sit at if you're trying to um, uh, see a big difference between two frame rate settings. Uh, because from 30 to 60, there's a big difference. It feels smoother. Um, unless you're watching a movie, then most people are used to seeing movies at 24 frames a second. So if you go faster than 24 frames a second, most people say it looks bad. Because they've been so conditioned to watch things at 24 frames a second when it comes to a big budget movie that... If they see anything with higher frame rates, they don't like it. And that's like a personal preference. It also goes back to the difference between, um, uh, give me a second here, vinyl, the way vinyl sounds, and the way digital audio files sound. A lot of people prefer the way vinyl sounds as opposed to um, any form of digital music, even if it's high resolution digital music, because they grew up with the warm excuse me, analog tone of a uh, good record player or even a cheap record player, and that's what they prefer um, as opposed to the higher quality containing more resolution of the, of the audio file in it, high quality audio file sounds. Um, because to them, that sounds too crisp. It doesn't have the warmth and human feeling of the record, the vinyl record. Um, so it's all a really neat set of personal preferences and what you grew up with and uh, what you prefer, a warm sound or a crisp sound or a clean sound as opposed to um, the feelings you get from a uh, record. Uh, I myself prefer digital, but that's mostly because I grew up with that and um, that's what I really got into as I was growing up, I should say, because I actually grew up with, um, I almost said VHS tapes, which is true, but not for audio. <laughs> for audio, cassette tapes were the thing for me. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, I had a lot of cassette tapes. I wore out a lot of cassette tapes because <clears throat> I played the living heck out of those things. Okay, now let's get back to this. Because I think I know what I'm going to do to play around with this. So let's see here. Gonna add. Do we have just a plain color output? <sighs> uh, 
let's see, input. Do we have something that's just colors? RGB, yes we do, here we go. Click on that. And so we're gonna click on here, click on this and click here. Now we're going to input this into here and here. Okay, so that removes the gradient from that. And now let's play around with something here by opening up this. Okay, there we go. All right, point six. Now, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to keep these off to the side here. And I am going to go into each one of these materials and actually add in this color to each one, because I think that's going to improve the output. There we go. Okay. To here, add that in. Also, like, apparently I had a lot of information to say about your comments to some agent, and I just went off. So uh, don't take anything I said as bad or anything against you. Um, because that's not what I meant. I just really liked all this information and my ADHD is like, I have all this information I wanna dump out into the world. Uh. Wrong button. Do that. And that. Okay. So there we go on that. Okay, so that's a little dark, so that's interesting. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to separate this one out from the rest, and I'm going to call it blue O4. And we're going to play around a little bit with this shader. That's interesting there. Kind of just leave this at point six. And let's try darkening this down a little bit here. Okay. Let's actually bring it back up just a tad. Okay. Do do. Just that a little bit. Hmm. 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 Yeah, I, I need that to be a shader because I'm in using that information. I was just thinking, like, could I change this to a flat color? And I was like, no, I actually use the information from the gradient that that shader produces to um, 
mask out information. So yeah, I can just leave that as is. Okay, yeah, let's go to here. And why don't we actually also separate out this one and I'll call this blue O3. Okay. And which one is this? I'm guessing it's the bottom here. Yeah. Okay. Now we go back to here and we're going to separate this one out and call it blue 02 and zoom out and let's dive into this okay that's this area here so it looks like I'm going to actually hit 0.6 on this and then adjust it to right here, like that. Okay. There we go. That's looking good. Okay. Now, let's add this. We're going to go to this one and name this O1. And just going to do that like so. There we go. Okay. I'm going to actually do that to get a little bit of contrast between here and here. Okay, now let's grab the light and move it around to see how it behaves on the object here. Excuse me. Yeah, it's really neat, like looking at how the um, lighting behaves on this. Okay, let's see here. Let's click on this. Okay, this has this one of these really big, kind of complicated, it's called a principal shader, <clears throat> which I'm not even um, sure on. I think it's just a bunch of shaders combined together that allows you to do a bunch of different things, and I do not need that. So I am going to um, replace it with a flat color. Okay, and I'm gonna delete that because I do not need any kind of um, lighting on it. I just need it to be solid lines going across. Okay. Now, let's see here. Um, so how is your day going, Sasami-chan, as I work on this? Okay. Yeah, that's really looking nice. This is interesting. Ah, OK. 
Okay. Okay, since I now know about this color input here, I can actually improve on my shader here. Boom. I don't need that anymore. And don't need that and don't need this. Actually, I can leave that back here just in case I never need to um, have it be um, lit up again. But otherwise, it's just a flat color. Oop. Okay. Do, 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 do. And probably I should just put that in there in case I ever need to do that. Hmm. I wonder. Let's just have a little bit of fun here. Click on this. Zoom out so I can find it. Grab the shader here. Copy it. Let's go back to this. And because it the curtains actually don't really have a lot of shading to them per se in a lot of shots. Sometimes they have a gradient effect applied to them, but most of the time they're just plain flat color texture. Um, so that's why they appear like this. But sometimes they do have um, this kind of gradient effect to it. So I am going to uh, see if I can't apply a similar effect to it. Um, so I'm going to paste in my shader, my tune shader here and See if I can't play around with that. I'm going to call this right spelling curtain. That's that's one. Okay, so I'm just going to call it Kurt. Okay, so let's take our color and spit it into here and here, and then up to the surface. Adjust that around a little bit. Open this up. Hmm. Oh. Okay, I thought I hit the separation button. So I'm going to do that. Click back on here. Ah. Yeah, it's good to hear you're doing good. Now let's go back to the curtain. Okay. Okay, so that's what that looks like. Okay, so that's kind of a neat effect I'm getting there. Let's grab one of the lights and move it around. It's creating a really fun look. Okay. 
That's like a really nice effect that's kind of showing up there, but it's not quite what I'm looking for, so I wonder. <laughs> Um, okay, that was interesting. Uh, I just noticed the, um, my tip button for coffee just refreshed for some reason. Okay. Um, so what is that show? Um, I can't quite read its name. I don't know why. That's mostly a me problem. Um, what is that show about that just ended? Okay. Hmm. Out. <laughs> Excuse me. Mm. I'm gonna add a save. Mm. Excuse me. Like, is it RGB mix? Is that what I want? Do I want a shader? Mixed shader? Let's add the shader here also. Let's add a RGB mix just in case. Okay, so I want something that's going to create a gradient. Let's see here. Just put all my current shaders here. D -d -d -d. Now, how am I going to mix this? Because I want a gradient. I'm trying to remember. Let's see. Let's see what inputs we have. Um, we have value, vertex color, volume info, target, yeah, texture coordinates, particle info, object info, light path, layer, weight, layer weight what is layer weight facing and hmm okay don't know if that is gonna have to look that up later but right now i'm trying to do a gradient map here. So let's go with, I'm going to need um, here, and we're going to go with another one of these nodes, and we're going to input that there. And uh, now, I know I'm going to need that, and I know I need that input into here. Just out of curiosity, what does this look like right now when I do that? And I put that to the shader there. And okay, that was that. So let's go with 1.5. This uh, goes between the two. Okay, let's go to point five here. And drag to 
is that. Well, it creates a pretty purple color there. Okay, let's go back to that. And then actually go back to mix. Okay, so that does kind of what I want, but I need to make it so it radiates between the two. So invert light, light fall off. That might be what we need here. So let's put this right here. Um, let's go with this one and put it there. Okay, so that does that. So that's not what we need. So, yeah, that's not what we need. Three best friends get sent to, this is me going back to the chat for um, rant. This is me going back to the chat after asking some slimy chat a question. Um, three best friends get sent to uh, to world of frogs, to a world of frogs, toads, and newts. Each lives with different with a different tribe and gets different points of view about who not to trust. Ah, ah, I can kind of read the name now. Okay, so I don't need that. So. Uh, this is me going back to um, <sighs> going back to uh, Blender now. Okay, I'm just gonna look at my qualified sylph over the side here. So we have strength, and we have here. So put that in that, and play around with numbers here. Okay, that's okay. Okay, so that does kind of what I figured it does. Okay. So now I need to take, and just to make it more easier to see, I'm going to darken this down a lot. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to hit 0.5 on that just to keep it blended between the two. Um, so I need to add some type of kind of shaper to it. Um, the first season set up the world, and the second season brings mystery and suspense, suspenseful twists. The third season was teased, and it's a real game changer. That's kind of usually how third seasons usually work. Um, they're usually where big changes happen because of um, the rule of threes. Um, ah, cool. If we have the time, we'll get into it. Because right now we're, we have a bunch of recordings done. I just need to make the time to sit down and edit them. Uh, Cause there's a lot of things going on right now and it's just all kind of whew, fun. Um, also, I actually have an exact date when um, I'll be switching from uh, how right now, every other week is I don't stream on Tuesdays. It's going to switch to every other week. I don't stream on Wednesdays uh, because of an appointment. I usually have on Tuesdays switched over to a different day. So, um, I now know when that's going to switch. And it will be next month on the 9th. I will not be streaming. And 
from then on, every other week, I will not be streaming on Wednesdays. <clears throat> okay, so now let's look at here. Let's see. Magic noise, point density, sky texture, wave, white noise. I'm thinking I can actually use one of these as some type of mask. So, uh, now which one here? It's not going to be a noise texture. I don't think it's a sky texture, but I could have, I'm going to try um, a sky texture here. So... Let's see. Okay. Now, how will I? I think if I just put it into that input area. And actually, I think I need to go to this and go to converter RGB to black white, because that will convert it into a value and then I can convert that here and that will work on that so I'm going to play around with this a little bit Hmm. Well, that's really creating some neat effects. Not quite what I'm looking for, but cool. Oh, oh, that's, oh, oh, that, that's, that's cool. That's neat. Huh. <sighs> and thank you for telling me the details of that show. Okay, that's that's really neat. Let's see what this one gets us here. Make that Okay, that, this is not exactly what I'm looking for, but it's fun to play around with. <laughs> That's just really neat. It's kind of what we're going for, kind of. Just got to tweak this a little bit to I think that's close to what we need there. Um, <laughs> thank you for giving me the heads up. Um, okay. So that feels about right that I'm going to actually, let's change this to, oh. Okay, that's interesting. Wow. In 
Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Wow. Woohoo. That that's a pretty color right there. That's very vibrant. Might want to keep note of that for the future for something. Just just look at how vibrant that is. That's not what I need, but wow. Okay. Let's just put this to uh, two. Yeah, two point five. Let's go with two point five. There we go. That feels close enough because it. I don't want it to be as like kind of grayish, dingy as that is. Okay. So that that works pretty well. Okay. So we got those curtains looking good. I just noticed an interesting phenomenon that's happening behind these curtains. It, it's it's almost like like right here you can see this bright area and I'm like, so why is that happening? <laughs> so let's click on this wall and go into the shader. Ah, huh. aha. Okay. I think I know what's going on here. This is using an older um, system I was setting up and playing around with. So I'm going to fix that. So click on here, zoom out, zoom in, tap on this, grab this converter, go back here, click on this. In here, paste the converter in, do that, do this, grab this, and go back to there, change this to black, change, yep, this to white. Interesting. I wonder why I'm getting that. All right, so let's go with 0.6. I wonder if I add in another here and change this to black. Okay, actually, let's make it 0.4. Okay. I wonder why there's that spot behind there, though this is interesting creating that 50% um, gray. Kind of creates some interesting effects some areas there. Uh, 
that's a real interesting look there. So yeah, this also like, if you ever have like multiple tone shadows in a cartoon, I could um, add in multiple steps like this to um, really create some separation. Okay. And if I adjust the color on this, it adjusts like the sensitivity of the gradation separations. So that might be something I can do here. So I'm going to set this to 0.25. And I'm going to get rid of that one. Grab this. second in those gaps it's almost like there's a hole in this model and it, it's like not uh oh and there's a new disney show about a ghost okay cool whoa hey we're also um past noon so we should be wrapping up soon so i'm just gonna do some more tweaking on this shader and then we'll call it for today So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to set this color back to 0.5, set this to 0.6, which gets us back to where we were before, or oh, 0.6, point, uh, point 0.61, and that gets us back to where we were before. I'm just going to have to play around a little bit with some tweaking because I'm not quite sure why I'm getting that um, gap there. So that's interesting. Gonna have to play around with that to figure out why. Actually, let's move these over so I can see some lines clearer. Okay, so that's all set. Okay, I wonder, let's try Changing it here. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, even underneath normal shading, I'm getting that kind of like there's a hole in the material look. Excuse me. Okay, 0.61. Hmm. I wonder. Let's click on this and this. Yeah, it's not poking through the material here. So I'm gonna grab this and yeah, changing its shape does do that. Um, I don't think This is that, but I'm going to move it. Yeah, that seems to be part of the problem there is how thin this section is. It might actually be poking through itself, and that's what's causing the... Um... Yeah, I don't see it poking through itself, though. So why don't we change this to wireframe? Yeah, it's not poking through itself. 
apparently it's thin enough that light is passing through it. Um, so I'm going to have to play around with that a little bit in the modeling. Okay, let's go back to render. That's interesting. So that means if I pull on the, oops, if I pull on the back stuff, I should get the same. Uh, no, it's not the distance from itself. It seems to be the distance from the light. So that's interesting. Because if I pull these um, points closer to the light, it actually fills up that weird gap behind it, but if I grab this and move it, I have to pull it through for it to... Huh, that's interesting. That just creates a really neat effect, what I was playing around with in the curtain. I like how that came out. It feels very much like how the show portrayed things here. Okay, so there's that. And there's also there's this great kind of gradient thing here. So let's grab this. Yeah, it's the distance from the wall there that's causing that problem. I think it's too close to the wall, and that's what's causing the problem. So let's go to the front. Look at it a little bit. Okay, I'm going to need a separate view. So let's go to the corner. this, rotate this, move it over, change this to render, and okay, let's actually grab it and, oh, I, yeah, I just like one click did it. That fixes the shadow problem I was having. Okay, so now that looks good. Okay. Back on this portrait. Okay, there we are. Boom. Okay, now I just need to get over here, grab this shader, copy it, go back to this, get to paste, and do this, and underscore O2, get that there, get that there, and put that there. And uh, let's edit this. It's like, yeah, so these look fine. Okay, so that's what happens when I do that. And angle that down a little bit here. And okay, there we go. Oh, man, this is a texture I didn't quite 
update. I do not need any of those. So I can get rid of that. And we can actually paste this shader into here. Move this off to the side, move this off to the side. Um, actually, I do that. Because this and this actually should have the same shader, so that should be fine. We'll find out once I input the correct stuff and output. Mm. Excuse me. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's try something here. Saturation. Can I put that right here? No, I cannot. Okay. But what I can do is I want a shader to RGB. Shader to RGB. Put that right there. Then I can put this into here and then this into here. And up the saturation. By just a tad. And. There's that. Let's copy this and go back to this one. And actually, go back to here because we want to actually copy this and this, then go back to here and paste that in. Boom, and boom. There we go. Because I noticed it got a little dingy when I added the shader on top of it, so that solves that problem. Okay. There we go. And I think that's it for today. Oop. Hit the wrong button on there. Okay. There's the stretch. So I think I will wrap it up for today. Yum. Yeah. Thank you once again for Sasami. Chan. Thank you once again for joining me, Sasami Jen. Um, as usually, I should say, for the usual YouTube stuff, please like, follow, subscribe, comment down below. Please be nice when you comment and respectful of others. Um, please watch other episodes of content on this channel. There's other streams if you want to go back and watch those and watch the progress so far. Um, you can also. Um, find other content on this channel like Amber's Reading Room and uh, our Thoughts On series and um, let's see here yeah. ah yeah the Thoughts On series where we go over um, pop culture topics me and Ember like um, as Simon Chan has mentioned in the chat room, there we watch a bunch of different shows. Um, we have kind of started on Owl House. We have like I think one recording done for that. Um, we have a bunch of other stuff. We actually did finish up watching the final season of My Little Pony: Frenchman's Magic. I just, as I've mentioned before, need to finish editing those. I, and I've also mentioned before, I don't know when I'll be able to get to those. I am working through and slowly putting things together for that um so thank you for your patience and thank you all for continuing to follow us and thank you for the new subscribers um and if you want more streams uh there's like i said there's stuff on this channel and i usually do it every week um you sh uh yeah every week and i try to do two streams a week not always um like i said i have an appointment on uh, Tuesdays usually, but the appointment is now switching over to Wednesdays, so it will now be every other week I stream on Wednesdays. Um, so thank you for your patience. Thank you for sticking with that. Um, Y'all have a nice 
time wherever you are, wherever, whether that's day, evening, or nighttime. Um, thank you all for joining me. Thank you all for watching the um, video on demand. And thank you for being here during the streams when you can. So 